Hey, John here. So in order to understand postscript, you have to understand this thing called reverse Polish notation, or what we call a postfix notation, which looks like this. First, let's start with what we already know. Infix notation is what you learn in grade school. Three plus four is how you express the sum of three and four. This guy, a Polish logician and mathematician named Lukasiewicz, here came up with this idea that if you put the operator in front of the two operands, you can convert the expression. It directly maps to this thing called an abstract syntax tree, which was useful and interesting at the time uh, and kind of the basis of the Lisp programming language, which was huge in the late 50s. Now, it turns out if you flip it around, you end up with reverse Polish notation or postfix notation. This um, notation allows you to read the operands, and as soon as you hit an operator, you have all of the data you need to execute that operator, which is extremely useful if you're trying to write a program to evaluate an expression directly without compiling and converting and optimizing syntax trees and all this other stuff. You can just simply go left to right and immediately execute the plus because you've already got the add end sitting there. So this is kind of a neat thing. And you can take advantage of this using a really simple uh, concept called a stack machine. So let's have a quick look at how stacks work in this context. Let's look at how data is collected over time. So at time t0, let's draw a stack like this. So with a stack, you can put things into it on the top and take things off of the top. The more stuff you put in, it buries the things underneath it. So for example, at time t0, we have an empty stack, and then we push in a one. At time t1 then, here's what the stack would look like. It would have a one in the bottom of it, all right? Later on, let's say it puts in a 32. We push a 32 into the stack. So at time t2, the stack would look like this. There's a 1 underneath a 32. We can push more stuff in there if we want to, or we can remove it. Let's say we pop something off there. I'll just put quotes around it. Pop something. Well, at time t3, then, you have a stack that looks like this, and you have a 1, and the 32 will have been popped out of it and removed. If you pop again, the 1 would come out. All right? It's as simple as that. Push stuff in the top, take things off the top. Anything on the top buries the things underneath. Okay, so how do you use this with postfix notation? Let's say I push a 3 in a stack. The stack then looks like this. It's got a 3 in there. Then after that, I put a 7 in the stack. Looks like this, a 3 and a 7. I then run into an operator. Oops, add. If I want to add something, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to take, pop two things off of the stack. I'm going to add them together, and I'm going to push the sum into the stack. So it will end up with a 10 like this. All right, now let's do one more uh, subtract. Let's say I got a 7 and a 2, right? And I want to subtract these two things. Well, the reason we need to talk about this is because now order matters. So which way does it go? Is it 7 minus 2 or is it 2 minus 7? It turns out that when you got a 7 in the stack like this, then you got a 2 on top of that, it takes the, uh, the two items out and it will say the guy on the bottom minus the guy on the top. So you'll end up with 7 minus 2 in this case and you'll have a 5 in there. All right, so hopefully you got a, an image in your head, kind of see where this is going. Let's look at how the stacks and stuff are expressed using this GhostScript interpreter. Now, what GhostScript is, is uh, you showed this in the last video, it is a, a an implementation of PostScript that is interactive and runs in the command line, and you can see what's going on when it runs. So if I draw images like you saw last time, you can see the lines and stuff show up in this canvas over here. Right now, we don't care about the canvas as much as we care about the language. So let's walk through some of the specifics of the language and how you express them in the uh, language of PostScript. So as I alluded to last time, PostScript files are literally just text. They're ASCII. In the simplest form, you can actually execute the uh, code that I drew on the page a minute ago. So if I said uh, uh, 7 and 2 and said add, GhostScript will execute this. It'll put 7 in a stack, it'll put 2 in a stack, it'll add them together and put the sum in the stack. This thing over here means there's one thing in the stack right now, which is what we would expect at this time. You can take pstack 
at any time, and it will print the entire context of, uh, contents of the stack out. And of course, 7 plus 2 is in fact 9. Doing a P stack does not disrupt the stack. As you can see, there's still one thing in there. If I want to get rid of it, I can type clear and just delete everything. While I'm playing around, this will be a useful thing to uh, use. Otherwise, if it gets really messed up, I can just exit Ghost Script completely and start it up again. So let's have a closer look at the 7 and the 2. If I just put 7 and 2 in there and don't do anything at all, uh, as one would expect, there should be two things in the stack right now. If I P stack, there is a 7 underneath a 2, just like we drew earlier. Let's subtract this time. Okay, now there's one thing in there. That should be 7 minus 2 and give us a 5. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's pop that out of the stack. Anytime I want to, I can pop one item out of the stack like this, and it'll just go away. Uh, I could have just as easily typed clear right now, but uh, clear deletes everything. So I just you actually use this from time to time in your programs. you got one extra thing in there, get rid of it kind of situation in your code. Uh, there's another thing that you can do. Let's just put a 27 in the stack. If you say double equals at any time, what that will do is it will pop the item off the stack and print it out, leaving you with one less item in the stack. So these are some uh, useful debugging aids. So I suppose another thing that you might want to uh, know how to do. So let's put six things in the stack. If I say count, what it will do is it will actually put the total number of things in the stack into the stack. So if we P stack now, it says one to the five, six. And when I said count, it put the number six in there because there were six things in the stack. If I do it again, it'll put another thing in the stack and tell me, oh, now there's seven in the stack because the count itself went into the stack. I can do this over and over and over again, and you can see the stack keeps getting bigger and bigger. No problem, all right? Clear it out. Okay, so uh, you've seen add and subtract. There's a multiply and a divide, two and six, mull, like so, ends up with the product on there. Okay, 2 times 6 is 12. You can divide, just like the subtract. The thing on the left is the, uh, uh, the numerator in a division. So if I say 20 and 5 div, I get 20 over 5 in the stack, which is 4. Now, this 12 down here is sitting in there because I forgot to clear it out after this multiplication because 12 is the product of 2 and 6. Uh, that's not a problem. I just wasn't paying attention while I was typing. So that's a pretty nice thing to notice here, right? I can do that, print them out. You saw that already. There's some other operators as well, like modulus division. You know, what is 3 mod 2, like that. All right, it's the remainder after a division, if you don't know what that is. If you want to negate something in the stack, let's say there's an 8 in the stack. You can see it right there, and you say neg. It pops the thing out of the stack. It negates it and pushes it back in there. Okay? Pop that out of there. Okay, not a problem. There's a whole lot of these things. There's absolute value. There's arctan, sine, cosine, as you can imagine, while drawing a lot of 2D graphics, that all the geometric type functions and trigonometric functions would all be present. So let's look at some other stuff that has to do with how you manipulate the stack itself. Let's say I put uh, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 in the stack. Okay, P stack. Right? There you go. I put the 5 in first, and this guy's on the top, right? All right. Now let's say, for some reason, I want to swap these two. Because uh, maybe I wanted to do a subtraction and somebody put them in in the wrong order. I got to reverse them. I want two. I want to do one minus two instead of two minus one. We'll get there soon enough as to why you need to do these things. You can type exchange. Exchange says pop two things off and then push them back on in the opposite order. So now we've got five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, one, two. It reversed these top two items. All right. You can duplicate the thing on the top of the stack like this. Now there's another one on there. I could do it again. Now there's going to be, you know, three of them, four of them, five of them, right? One, two, three, four, five. You can duplicate all you want. Um, you can copy things. 
let's say, let me clear this out. Let's go to one, two, three, four, five. Do it the other way around this time. Just keep things, you know, keep things exciting. So let's say I want to make a copy of these two things on the stack. I want to end up with one, two, three, four, five, four, five. How do I do that? Well, what I can do is I can push a two onto the stack like this. There's my two. Then I can say copy. And what copy does is it pops the top of the stack off. And it takes that number, which I just put a two in there. It takes th that many things out of the stack. And then it puts them back in twice. All right. So it says to make a copy of the top two items. And as you would expect, it grew. It grew by one even though we copied two items, right? Because the two itself is removed. The two was the parameter to the copy command. So now it's the one, two, three, four, five, four, five, just like I said. Take the top two and make a copy of it. Let's clear that out and do another one so we know for sure. Let's put in a, a six, five, four, three, two. And now let's uh, have a look at this stack. All right, let's say I want uh, four of these. Copied. So I should have one, two, three, four. It should see six, five, four, three, two, and then five, four, three, two again. All right. Let's put the four in there and have a look, see, make sure that we all know what's going on. All right. So it's going to say take these four down here and duplicate them. Six, five, four, three, two, and a five, four, three, two. Okay. So that's how copy works. All right, so let's look at another operator. Let's say I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the stack. All right, let's say I want to make a copy of the fourth thing down in the stack, like this guy. Whatever's here, I want a copy of it on top of the stack up here. So what I do for that is I look at the, uh, I'm going to use a, a, an operator called index. And it's going to be given a number, and then you just simply say index. And the number is how far down on the stack you want to go. This one is the zero if element. One, two, three. So the fourth one down is number three because we start counting at zero, right? So if I say three, you can see there's a three on the stack. And then I type index, all right? It didn't grow because it popped the three off and it went down zero, one, two, three. It took the element here and put it on the top of the stack because that's what I wanted it to do. It otherwise left the stack alone down here. All right, so let's go down and grab one thing out of the stack and put it on top. That's what the index guy does. Now things get more interesting. Let me clear this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Again, uh, we're gonna talk about a command called roll. How roll works is you tell it how many items and which way to rotate the stack. So what I can do is let's say I grab these four items off the top of the stack. So I say four and I say one, all right? So there we have, there's these four guys is what I'm referring to. I just put a four and a one on the stack that's up here. And then I say roll. What roll's going to do is he's going to grab this guy here. And that's going to tell it how many times to roll the stack. And this is how many elements in the stack need to be rolled. So these four here are going to be rolled. All right. And what that means is... One, two, three, four. See this came from here. So you see the six, seven, and eight are still where they're at, but this nine came off of here and went down here between the five and the six. So rolling with a positive quantity, it rolled it once. So it took the thing off the top and it and it rotated this thing around like this. It rolled it around, okay? Let me clear the stack. Oops. And it's now empty, okay. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right? This time let's go four and roll it twice, okay? So we've got a two here instead of a one. 
for these four guys right here. This time, what's going to happen is it's going to roll nine around and eight around. It's going to do the exact same thing just twice. Okay? So you see the nine went down to here. And the eight then came around and went below the nine. So this is just going around and around and around like that, okay? Now let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this time we're going to go four and we're going to go negative one instead of positive one. What that means is roll it in the other direction, okay? Here's my stack. These are all in order. Four and negative one. Now what's going to happen is instead of taking the nine down here, it's going to take the six and bring it up there. And there you got the six came up and the nine shifted down like this. So this time it stole this six out of here and moved it up to there, right? Okay. And again, if you said negative two, it would have rolled it twice. And you know, four could be seven, nine, however many you want to do. It should be obvious that if it if this is two and this is either one or negative one, it's the same thing as the exchange. You just flip the top two, right? All right, so let's say I want to express this four plus two times three. In infix notation, this means add these two together before multiplying by three, okay? If you don't have the parentheses in there and you just said four times two, or four plus two rather times three like this, same thing with no parentheses, this means do the multiplication first, then add, okay? Now, this means nothing to, to, uh, to postscript. Uh, I'm just putting this in there so we can look at it and talk about it, all right? So let's say I want to deal with both of these two expressions. I want to do the add followed by the multiply, or I want to do the multiply followed by the add. How do I do that? Well, if I say 4, 2, like this, I got the 4 and the 2 in the stack, and I can say add, all right? The sum is in there. I can then put the 3 here, and I can say multiply. And I got my 18, everybody's happy, okay? Let's say I want to do it the other way around. I want to do the, um, the uh, what is it, the 2 times 3 and then add 4? Well, then I have to rearrange my, 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 uh, my expression. I uh, have to do the multiply first. Now, if I wanted to, I could still say 4, 2, and 3 in the stack like this if I wanted to. I could do this because I could say mull, and it will now multiply these two guys. This mull is the operator for multiply in PostScript. And you can see 2 times 3 is 6. And then I can say add. And I got 10 in there now, which is the right answer for 4 plus 2 times 3 with no parentheses. All right? I could also just as easily said 2, 3, mull, like that. And then said 4, add. Okay? So the takeaway here is you can put a whole lot of stuff in the stack if you want and only deal with the stuff on top and come back to the stuff on the bottom later, or you can use it as you go. If things are in the stack in the wrong order, you can use these other commands like a exchange and roll and index and dupe and copy and move things around to get them in the order that you want them to be in. And then you can use the, uh, the operators to do the mathematical expressions on them. Now, armed with only these operations, we can go a whole long way into calculating where we want things to show up on the page, how big we want them to be, and get them rendered the way we want them. Thanks for watching. See you next time.